plaintiff, Nafisha Kearney, says her daughter was good friends with the defendant's daughter until she forbid her daughter from going to the defendant's home due to domestic violence issues. In retaliation, the defendant's daughter started vandalizing her car and continued to do so for months. She's suing for the damages and an assault. Defendant Charlie Randolph says all of this started after Nafisha started spreading rumors around the neighborhood about her daughter, claiming she had AIDS. Charlie insists her daughter accidentally fell into Nafisha's car, and she's countersuing for emotional distress. Start with you. Okay. 2007, I moved in. 2011, Miss Randolph moved in. Our daughters played very well with each other. Her daughter would come over to my house. We would have sleepovers. I have a picture of them sleeping <laughs> peacefully together. All right. Um, I took her to what a mall. What year is this when they were sleeping This was peacefully. 2012. All right. Um, I took her daughter to the mall. I did her hair for back to school. She loved me. I love her as if she was my own child. Um, we went to the movies. My boyfriend cooked for them. We did so much together. Now, later on, I would hear from property management and tenants in the building. And I, I would see the police coming to the house for domestic violence. You would see people coming in her house, mm -hmm. in her apartment. People would come in and out 24-7. Um, you smell drugs in the hallway. And I, I, talk, I talked to property management. Management said, well, keep her, keep your daughter out of her house. I, I never told my daughter that she can not play with her. So maybe she took that the wrong way. Did you keep your daughter out of the house, though? Yes. Okay. So I guess she what took that. What reason did you give? I just told my daughter, look, you cannot go in if she asks you to, you know? I know, but I'm sure your daughter said, why, mama? Because it was, you see the police being called because she saw the police, you know, coming over there, too, because, and the noise and the doors closing. And so um, I guess she took that the wrong way. So I bought a Mercedes in September of 2014. Mm -hmm. In January, I started seeing scratches. And throughout the year, I really started seeing scratches, chemicals, everything being thrown on my car, food. I have pictures of, of the food and everything being thrown on my car. In July, me and my daughter did a stakeout. We, I took her to the mall and she said, Mom, let's do a stakeout. Within 10 minutes, I, I'm on the phone with my boyfriend. So within 10 minutes, her daughter comes around the corner with an object in her hand, scratching my car. We're sitting in the car. I have a slight sense on my car. Music playing. I don't know why her daughter came with an object, scratched, going down the side of my car in my trunk. I opened the door. She looked shocked. And she flicked her middle finger up, and she was like, F you. Her mom was standing on the balcony. My boyfriend was looking out the window at them because he was a witness to this as well. So I called um, the police. I got a police report of this. Let's see it. Of her daughter. And what did the know, police with the damages. do? I had screws under my tires. Now, um, did the police go and speak with either her or her daughter? Yes. And what did they tell the police? She told them that her daughter fell into the car. Okay, let me hear from you. Um, I met you. Like in 97, 98, 96, 97, when I was in Wayne Don't County. Don't start that. My wife is here again. I'm, I'm letting that's, you know. That's why she comes here, to hear what y'all talking about. <laughs> that's just why she comes. But... Women like to come here talking about, I met you. We know each other. No, we don't know each other at all. Don't start that. No. But no, you came to visit me where I was locked up at in um, Wayne County. I came to speak? Yeah, she oh, did. Right. And I was a really troubled child then. And you told me I didn't have to do the things I did, just get my life together. And since then, I have. Ooh. I left Detroit in 2000, and I moved to um, Park Morton in 2011 when I lost my job. Um, we was pretty good friends and everything, and things happened far as he say, she say stuff started. She said someone said something about me and my kids. I confronted the lady. The lady said no, she said it. And then I cut all ties. And after the he started in like 2013, 2014, that's when she said me and my daughter vandalized her car. Did the police come to you and talk to you about the car damage? Yes, they did. And what did you tell them? They asked me what happened. I said my daughter was coming from Chanel's house and she fell. And he said, well, it looked like she just touched the car with her hand, because if she scratched the car, it would have been way deeper than what it was. And he so, checked her. You're and telling she had me nothing. that the picture I'm looking at, where there's a scratch all the way across the car. Did your daughter come home with 
blood on her nails any day. No. All right, because that's what she would have had had she fell into the car with her nail. In fact, this appears that it's been wiped across with a sharp object. And it sounds like you're suggesting that that sharp object was her falling into the car and her nail touched the car. Is that what you're telling me? When I told the police, I said she fell. Mm -hmm. When he took us over there, there was not one scratch on the car. Mm -hmm. It was a small little scratch on the bumper. Where the light is, it was a scratch right there. She said uh -huh. my daughter fell directly on her bumper. Uh -huh. Right there, there was no scratch right there. If you go by the light, there was a little scratch okay. on the light. And how did the scratch get there? I do not know. Me and I my daughter did not do it. I thought you just told me somebody fell onto it. My daughter fell, yeah, but who she did told not scratch you that? the car. Who told my you daughter that? Told she me said, I fell she onto said, the car. She said, Mommy, I fell, and I got back up. And that's when she hopped up the car and said, I got you, I got okay. you. All right. Tell me about this pain and suffering you're suing for. I'm well, convinced her daughter scratched your car. Okay. Go ahead. Well, the pain and suffering is for her going around the neighborhood and, well, October 6th, she um, did a news article, did an interview with the Post. So, in the news article, it clearly states that she keeps weapons all over her house that she told the Post, here are the weapons. Um, Child Protective Services took her children because they have evidence bags here that they took. So this was October it, please, that Dora. they took from her. Um, October 27th, they released it. All right, let me ask her about that, ma'am. Is that true? No, that is not. Assault. Let's talk about that, ma'am. Uh, okay, we went to court Friday during mediation. This past Friday for this past mediation. Friday mm -hmm. for mediation. So the mediator asked what happened. My daughter was in the room too, and she was so disrespectful to my daughter, called her whores, called her so much stuff that the mediator said, stop disrespecting her. So the mediator told her to stand, my daughter to stand outside the door. So the mediator asked what happened, and I said, well, she believes, I believe she's throwing some kind of bleach or something on it. Charlie says, it's not bleach that I was throwing in your car, it was lie. So, the mediator, she kept, being, Quiet. she kept being so disrespectful. The mediator said, well, look, I can see that this is not going to get handled today. She said, you sure is right. I'm not paying this B. So the mediator said, stop. So the mediator, they, we, we're in this room with no cameras. So she said, I'm going to go out because this, was go this is going to trial. Ms. Randolph said, it sure is going to trial. So she went and got the papers. She came back in, spit in my face pulled my hair out. Her boyfriend also jumped on me because my mom and my daughter were standing outside the door. And... Okay, let me hear from you regarding the assault. We was going to the mediator. Um, she said some things in the mediator which I didn't like, which was lies. It allowed her daughter to say mean things too. So when I cursed and said she needed to shut the up, she said, well, okay, she need to leave. So the mediator left. And she kept making belligerent statements to me, oh, you ain't got your kids. I said, honey, I have all my kids. And I didn't get evicted. I have an emergency transfer, which mm -hmm. I can't explain why I so have an emergency transfer. So what happened in the room? So I walk out, she spit on me. When I say she spit on me, she hawked and spit on me and scratched me on my neck and snatched my wig off. So when that happened, yes, I turned around and I hit her. Stop laughing now. She got a nice wig. Now go ahead. Go ahead, ma'am. They laugh when you say she snatched it off. Go ahead. Yeah, she snatched it off. So mm -hmm. I turned around and I had stitches in my finger at the time. So I popped two stitches and yes, we got to fight. My boyfriend did not do anything to her because I was dragging her around that room. Yes, first of all, you spit on me and scratched me. I didn't even hit you. You spit on me from the back, not the front. From behind me, you spit on me and tried to grab me like this. You so, were dragging her how? By her hair and Is her she, face. She didn't have a wig on? No, she got down her tracks in. Okay, they don't come out when you drag? Well, one of them did. <laughs> okay. Anyone have any evidence as to who was the initial aggressor? She says you spit on her first, which is an assault. She says, ma'am, that you attacked her. Does anyone have any independent evidence as to who was the aggressor? No. Anyone have that? No. Your counterclaim for emotional distress is for what? Um, from the things she was saying about my daughter. She was going around the neighborhood telling the people and their kids that my daughter had AIDS. She was? Yes, her and her daughter was going around. So my daughter got really depressed and tried to harm herself, which I have a letter stating from that and her psychiatrist, because she's still seeing a psychiatrist now. And when so did she I. start seeing the psychiatrist and for what? Um, she started seeing her in July after 
June when most of the parents came to me and asked me that my daughter have HIV. Okay, and that was the first time your daughter began seeing a psychiatrist is after they made the remark? Yes. Or alleged remark? Yes. Never had seen a psychiatrist Never before. Seen before then. Let's see the evidence of seeing a psychiatrist. And never before and June did you. What do you have there? Oh, this is a statement. She wanted to be here, but no, no. Okay. But I want to see the evidence on the psychiatrist okay. first. All right. And September, following a hospitalization over the summer and a suicide attempt, and several behavioral concerns presented <laughs> by teachers at school. Prior to the hospitalization, C1 reported hearing voices that encouraged her to kill herself. C1 has a prior diagnosis of ADD and a family history of bipolar disorder. You just told me that your daughter has never seen a psychiatrist before this incident. The doctor reports that your daughter was previously diagnosed with ADD and has a family history of bipolar. Your claim is dismissed and yours is granted. Have a Thank good day. You. All that you said about my daughter having AIDS, now you said we did it, now I guarantee you, I guarantee you it now. If she would have apologized for vandalizing my car during mediation, I would have torn the papers up. You're a liar and a lady. Also said no she would throw bleach it. in my face okay, I'm a to bleach. property management. This is what I have to go through. Because she sat there. Worry about it now. If you look at the Washington Post, she keeps weapons stored throughout her apartment. Yes, I do. I live in a really bad But if your child you really is think suicidal I did this, I'm and is really depressed, you why now. keep weapons in your apartment? I'm lost. You might as well give the child the knife and let her harm herself.